Welcome to the Touch MBA Admissions Podcast. Do you need help figuring out which schools to apply to or how to get into the world's top MBA programs? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others on this podcast and on our site, touchmba.com, as they seek the admissions edge. And now, here's your host, Darren Joe. Hey guys, it's Darren here. Welcome to the Touch MBA Podcast, where we're all about helping you find the best MBA program for you. And of course, we want to help you get in to those programs. So welcome to the show. This week, speaking of best MBA programs, we spoke to Dr. Dana Brown, who is the executive director of the MBA program at Oxford University at Said Business School. And yeah, I learned a lot about the program, and I think you will too. What I took away from our conversation is that, you know, Said and Oxford is just such an intellectually stimulating place. And that's one of the biggest reasons to go to this business school is because you're going to be surrounded by, you know, some of the world's top scholars. It's a super international cohort. They're growing the program, and the program is specifically designed to help uh, its students think about big world scale problems, water shortages, population changes, etc. Dr. Dana is a straight shooter. She shares a lot of great advice as well in terms of what the school is looking for from applicants. Note, they're looking for ambition. <laughs> so definitely listen carefully to that part of the talk as well. And as always, if you need help figuring out which schools fit you best, if you want to get some admissions advice, go head over to touchmba.com. Let us know a little bit more about yourself, and we'd be happy to help you out there. So on to the episode. I am thrilled to have our next guest on the show, Dr. Dana Brown is the executive director of the MBA program at Said Business School at Oxford University. And Dana has a very distinguished background. She got her PhD in political science from MIT, and she also got her master's in philosophy in Russian and East European studies from Oxford. And Dana, you've also taught at Oxford. That's correct. I've been a, a, a professor in business uh, for the past 10 years, actually. I spent uh, the early part of my career teaching international business and corporate social responsibility here at Said Business School. I've also taught as a visiting lecturer at business schools and in MBA programs and executive education programs around the world. I spent three years in EM Lyon. Uh, which is a French business school as well. And then I returned here to come and um, help direct our MBA program. So you've literally experienced the program from all different angles as a student, as an administrator, as a teacher. So we're, we're so uh, thrilled to have you on the show. Thank you for coming on. It's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. So the first question I like to ask is simply what makes the Oxford MBA unique? Well, a number of things make it unique. We are Said Business School, a young business school um, situated in an ancient university. And that statement in and of itself says a lot about who we are. Because as a young business school, we are entrepreneurial. We were born in the era of globalization. We've always been a global business school with a global mindset and an openness to the development in the business environment um, that's going on in the world. We are also a, a part of this university. So as a constituent part of the university, we are subject to the rigors of the university, to the procedures of the university, um, and we also get a lot of the benefits of being part of the university. We don't just sit alongside it, um, we're part of it. All of our faculty and students, for example, are members of the university colleges, and what that means is they partake in the social life of the colleges, they meet people from other disciplines on a regular basis and interact with them and talk about you know, what is is that we're thinking about here in the business school, what future business leaders are thinking about, and what are scientists thinking about, and philosophers thinking about, and others thinking about um, around the school in different disciplines. We also have the opportunity to integrate a lot of what is happening around the university into our curriculum and into the other activities that students are involved in. So for example, 
um, a number of our MBA electives are offered by professors from around the university. This year we had an elective called Leadership in the Humanities, and we looked at the concept of leadership through the perspective of different disciplines in the humanities, and we had students doing things like conducting a choir together to learn about teamwork and leadership qualities. Um, we also, for example, work through our entrepreneurship center with a lot of the scientific community here in the university, um, inviting scientists to talk to us about their ideas and for us to share with them our knowledge about the business community. So this is really different you know, from many business schools, this ability to truly integrate other ways of thinking about issues and to you know, be open to different approaches to the types of challenges that business leaders confront today. Fascinating. And I saw on your website that, you know, in big, bold letters, you guys say, we aim to provide the world's future business leaders with the skills, knowledge, and personal qualities needed to meet the world scale challenges of the 21st century. And that really stood out to me because you're talking about water and energy and population challenges. Um, I guess my question to you is, how does a one year program um, like Saeed, help do this? Yeah, that's a great question. We're really ambitious here. It's our fundamental understanding that business leaders in the 21st century need to have a bigger picture about where the business is going, how the competitive landscape globally is evolving, um, in order to be successful, right? And from a purely business point of view, this isn't necessarily about taking a particular philosophical perspective on business. This is about doing business in the 21st century. You have to understand what's going to happen with our environmental resources. You have to understand what, who's going to make those critical decisions. You have to understand how populations are aging and what the population and workforce is going to look like you know, in 10, 20 years down the line in order to understand what, what business is going to look like, what's industry going to look like. So we think it's pretty critical that we give students some perspective on this. And again, we benefit from being in a community of people who are thinking about these issues on a broad level. And so we have an opportunity to bring in different voices um, to the discussion at multiple points during the MBA curriculum. Um, as you probably saw on our website, the curriculum includes uh, participation in what we call uh, Go To Global Opportunities and Threats Oxford which is an online, I know there's sirens in the background, <laughs> an online um, learning platform um, where students um, learn directly from experts in the particular fields, big data or demography or water management. Um, and then they work in tutorial groups to, to think about what do these issues actually mean for business today. And in, in doing that, they're they're doing the same thing that a lot of executives are doing today in the boardroom, which is saying, we need to really understand what's going on out there, and we need to understand what that's going to mean for our business in the future and how we react to that. And we're asking our students to do exactly the same thing under the guidance of um, experts in the area and academic experts. Let's get that discussion underway and learn in that way. So it's just constant critical thinking and engagement with the issues and keeping people open, um, open-minded about these things. And do those go to topics, will those change year to year? Yeah, what we do is we run two topics each year, and one of the topic remains the same for two years, if you see what I mean. So last year we covered demography and big data, and this year we'll cover big data and um, water scarcity. Interesting. And how would you describe the culture at Oxford to someone who has never had the chance to step onto your campus and, and really get a feel for it? One thing I guess you would notice right away is it's really a global uh, business school. We have people here from all over the world, and, and we embrace that. So we actually um, embrace different ways of looking at problems and different ways of thinking about things. We try to put people together who are likely to have very different perspectives on issues. So that's the first thing. The culture is just global in its in its very essence and very nature. Um, it's also, you know, what, what we encourage is an environment of critical thinking, open-mindedness, and learning, because that's really what Oxford is about. And sometimes students ask me, 
what are you really looking for in a candidate? And I have all the obvious answers that you'd expect in terms of achievement and uh, potential. But I also say one thing that's really important to us is an open mind, an ability to learn, an ability to reflect, an ability to think critically about issues and to never be satisfied that you know it all, rather to um, keep on learning. That's what this environment really is about. Yeah, and is is the MBA program or, or I guess Saeed Business School, particularly reputable in any academic discipline? Yes. Um, we have very strong finance department, for example, very leading experts in um, private equity, for example, um, and multiple examples. And in our marketing department, you may be familiar um, with the work of Linda Scott, who's doing some pretty cutting edge work on um, bottom of the pyramid type of work with some big companies in Africa and around the world and also on women in leadership. Um, we have a strong center for retailing here. Uh, there's quite a lot of capacity here. As you can imagine, the scholars within the school are, are leading the way in many fields. Yeah, and because I noticed that, at least in the last uh, Financial Times report, like your students rated Said very highly for entrepreneurship and, and CSR as well. Is, is entrepreneurship a big part of, of the program? Entrepreneurship is a big part of our business school. We have here an entrepreneurship center, and we have also the school center for social entrepreneurship. And the two centers can work collectively um, to provide a range of support for students who want to think about entrepreneurial activity. Um, entrepreneurship is also core to our curriculum. So what we encourage in that respect is um, for students to develop an entrepreneurial mindset, as we say, or a way of thinking that gets them to think outside the box whether or not they're setting up a small enterprise or they are working within a large enterprise and need to think about their business models in a different way. And a lot of the curriculum is geared towards that way of thinking. The entrepreneurship centers sit here and support our students in a number of ways. All of the students um, do an entrepreneurship project, for example, and they work in teams, um, and they receive mentorship from entrepreneurs in our alumni community and in the community around Oxford, and then multiple forms of encouragement um, um, to move forward with their business idea if they want to, or to just learn from the very experience of it and however they want to grasp that. Um, on the social uh, entrepreneurship side, we have um, Pamela Hardigan, who's the director of our school center, is also doing a lot of leading research in that area and um, is a leading speaker for the idea of including uh, business for society in our, in, our, in our more mainstream way of thinking. Yeah, and that leads into my next question, which is, you know, why should MBA candidates, you know, get their MBA in Oxford and I guess the UK in general when, you know, they could go to the US or other parts of Europe or even Asia? Well, I think, you know, <laughs> that's a decision for each candidate to make. I mean, part, part of the appeal of being here, again, is really the global nature of the community here. You, you, our students come from 45 different countries. Um, you won't find that in most business schools, um, and you certainly won't find that in most American business schools, that you get that much diversity on a single program. And that means that the alumni is diverse, and also our faculty is very diverse. So again, that's something that's really unique. Um, and also, as I said before, our position within the university and the um, availability to students of the university's resources as a whole so students are really connected into um, the university uh, population here and community and also the alumni community of the university uh, once they become members. And that's also unique to them. We aren't far from London. Um, we actually, if you walk out of the train station, you're practically in our front door um, on the train from London, um, which is another convenient um, aspect of, of coming here. So it's a nice place to come in that sense. Yeah, and, and you mentioned the community uh, of at Oxford and, and the intellectual vibrancy when you're bringing in scholars and all these different uh, academic subjects. What is it like to be an alumni of Oxford? I mean, you got your master's there. You know, is it a really active alumni body? What, what, is, what is that like? Yeah, it's 
what you make of it. It is an active alumni body. I mean, Oxford University has chapters around the world, and also we we often have uh, Oxford Cambridge clubs around the world in different places, which makes the network even broader uh, in some places. And you know, the, I think though, from the point of view of doing a degree here at Oxford or doing the MBA here at Oxford, I mean, we try to create a really strong sense of community within the business school so that we know everyone's name and we're familiar with their background and their aspirations um, and we encourage the students to really get to know one another and work with one another and it's a pretty intense year so one year programs people get to know one another really well and the networks that are formed are pretty strong um, and people tend to carry that on I mean I can say that even today, I look back, I did my degree here at Oxford 20 years ago, um, and still, if I look at my network, if I stood back and looked, I would find that most of the network comes from that time, because we were, we were here, we were thinking together, we were doing something special together, and you know, it, just, it just carries on. That, that's fantastic. And if we can now switch gears and, and talk about your admissions process. So uh, that's what a lot of our listeners are so curious about. Uh, you mentioned that one thing you're really looking for is an open mind and the ability to think critically. What other traits are you looking for from, from top students in your program? Okay. Well, we generally are looking for a strong academic background. Um, we take academic backgrounds quite seriously. We, we look at the GMAT, of course, uh, like other business schools, uh, as a measure of ability to succeed um, in the type of classroom environment that we have. We are looking for demonstrated capability to work um, in a diverse environment, to work with teams, to take a leadership role when necessary. And we're looking for ambition. Ambition is really important. I want to do something with myself, with my life. I want to make a difference. And that doesn't mean necessarily I want to do something charitable. It's just make a difference, innovate, make a difference in the world, be a, a leader um, that has an impact. And so we often do ask candidates, you know, what impact are you going to have on the world? Right? Um, it's a tough question. But that's what we're looking for, people who are thinking that way. And um, we, we take the admissions process very seriously. So we look holistically at the candidates. All of our candidates are interviewed. Um, we discuss every candidate in great detail um, because we really want to have the right group of people here, the right class, and, and we, we tend to achieve that. We have some fantastic people in the MBA class. Yeah, and you talked about Oxford's rigorous ac academic standards, and I, I saw that your minimum recommended GPA is 3.5, well, at least on the U.S. system. Um, could you, like, just talk a little bit more about those those minimum requirements? I mean, if I had a 3.3, would could I still apply, or...? It's a good question. I mean, as I said, we look holistically at the candidate, and we understand that people have different starting points in life, people have different backgrounds, things happen to people, and so we are very open to discussing a candidature, if you see what I mean. If somebody has very strong credentials, yes, we want to talk to you, and we'll be very honest with people when they come to us from the outset. We want to hear your story, we want to hear your interest, and um, if we don't think it's a good fit, we, we tell you quite early on in the process. Um, um, but we, we, we do understand people have different stories, and people come from all parts of the world who are coming here, and, and not everyone has had an opportunity to go to an elite university or um, you know, looks like um, a, a particular type of candidate, and we're, we're open to that. Look for potential, for motivation, for ambition, as I said before. Yes, and uh, I saw that you have six deadlines running from September to May, and that most, it looks like decisions are returned within five, five, six weeks? Mm -hmm, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so could you walk us through what happens from when you receive an application to when you return a decision? Sure. So we receive the applications um, and we go through them as a committee holistically to make a short list of who we would like to invite for our interviews. 
Um, we then send out invitations for interviews. And we interview candidates not only in Oxford, but also in other locations around the world. So um, on our end, we, we put together a team of interviewers um, who are going to be in different locations and see where our candidates are and try to meet as many people face-to-face -face as we possibly can. Um, we do a few interviews on Skype when we can't have the opportunity to get to a person's location or they cannot come to us for some reason. The interviews last about a half an hour, generally speaking. Sometimes we come back and do a second interview um, if we want to discuss something further. It doesn't indicate anything. Um, it's simply that we want to talk about something further. Once all of the interviews are complete, which takes some time, we meet as an admissions committee and we discuss all of the candidates. We look at their profile as a whole um, and the admissions committee reaches a decision and we then inform our candidates of the decision and we go from there in offering support and guidance um, on whether or not they want to take up the opportunity when they're given. Who conducts the interviews? Do you, is it all admissions committee members or students, faculty? It's all faculty and admissions um, professionals here at the school. Um, so and people who work for us for example as sector consultants. We have a number of um, people who work with us, who've worked with us for a long time, um, giving career advice and working on the admissions who come out of different industries. And they also help us out with the interviewing faculty. I do quite a lot myself, as you can imagine. Our associate dean of programs does quite a lot. We have an academic chair for the MBA, an executive MBA. He also does a lot of the interviews. So it's mixed. Sometimes you get two people and sometimes it's one person interviewing. And you mentioned, you know, ambition is something you're looking for, you know. You want candidates that have made an impact or want to make an impact. And how important is it that candidates have well-researched career goals? Because you mentioned you, you have some sector consultants that also do the interview. So I imagine that um, they're partially there to, to give that, you know, gain that sort of insight as well. Yeah. Yeah, we, we provide quite a lot of support for students in this area. This is a one-year MBA, and one of the challenges of the one-year MBA is that you know, things have to happen pretty quickly, right? If you want to be employed at the end of that one year, you pretty much have to start planning the process from the very start while you're in a period of intense studies. And we recognize that, and therefore we begin the conversation about career right from the outset. I mean, even in the interview, we want to understand what are you thinking about? Um, do we need people to have a clearly defined plan? We like people to have an idea of where they want to go with the understanding that learning opens your mind and, and may change your direction. But we want to be there to support you through that process and help you make the most of any kind of changes in your path that you might consider. Um, if you're quite certain about where you're going, you know, we can put in place the mechanisms to support you all the way through. I should mention that one of the things that we offer on the program is um, our students have an opportunity to not only work with career services and the sector consultants, but they also have an opportunity to have an executive coach and that coach would work with them from early on in the year to help define their personal strengths and weaknesses. And we then have a talent development program about someone who decides, well, you know, I'm, I'm lacking in confidence or I'm not a great public speaker and I'd like to be, we can push them towards particular workshops and help them get the support they need to develop those skills while they're here in addition to the broad business knowledge. So in that way, you know, we have you thinking about career and who you want to be, not just from the perspective of what job would I like when I get out of here, but from the perspective of, you know, who am I and what do I want to do and what do I want, how do I want to self-develop um, during this process of the MBA. And, you know, careers are uh, these days they're they're eclectic and evolving and you know we don't expect none of us expect to be in the same uh, career uh, for long periods of time and that's also something that we understand and discuss with people and, and, and try to try to think through you know um, the path more more than just the uh, first job out basically. your class has about 200 students per intake or yes. what's the size 240 per intake 240 okay yes. But starting in 2015 to 16, we will be growing the program so that we will have 320 huh. students. And the students will study in, we study in what we call streams of 80 students each. And those streams do their core work 
together. So we have three streams currently, and we will have four streams going forward. Great. And um, I'm sure you get this question a lot, but I have to ask it. And that is, if you, <laughs> do you have a better chance if you apply earlier? Because you had six rounds. Uh, how does that work? <laughs> well, we... We hope we are getting the best candidates from the uh, the whole round. I wouldn't want to dissuade anyone from applying at any point in time in the year. Um, I think we, we actually do a pretty good job, I think, of getting the best candidates from all the rounds so that I wouldn't say that a great candidate that applies in round six has ever been denied a place here. So, I mean, I love to see them earlier. I like to see who's coming. I like to start to like, the conversations as soon as possible and, and learn about people. Um, but we encourage the applications all year long. It's clear. And um, would you have any last tips for our applicant listeners on what they can do to improve their chances of admission? Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, take the GMAT and prepare for it. Um, GMAT's important to us. It's an indicator, and especially with a lot of people coming from really diverse educational backgrounds, it's an important indicator to us of um, ability in some areas. And also, we noticed that um, a number of our employers are also looking at the GMAT. So that's one thing. Just do the GMAT. Um, you know, and otherwise, I mean, I, I think give some thought to some serious thought. Why do you want to do the MBA? Uh, what, are you, what are you going to get out of this? And what do, you, what do you want to make of that opportunity if you take it up, if you're given that opportunity? That's something, I think, you know, it sounds obvious that people should think about that before they apply, but they should seriously think about that and be ready to discuss and articulate how this adds value um, to their life and their career and make sure that it's the right commitment for them. Got it. Got it. And um, in terms of financing the program, uh, could you let us know what percentage of your class gets scholarships and what um, your average scholarship amounts are? Well, the percentage actually um, varies. We right now are in the process of um, getting a couple of new scholarships on, on, on board, so it's hard to say at the moment, but at least 10% of the class would be given um, some form of a scholarship um, from our own set of scholarships, that is. And so we have different types of scholarships and different amounts. Um, there's the school foundation scholarships, our scholarships for people who are interested in social enterprise. Um, Pershing Square scholarships exist for our MBA 1 plus 1 program, which is when you have one year of a master's and one year of an MBA. We have Saeed Foundation scholarships that are some are full and some are partial scholarships. Um, and there are a number of other different types of scholarships for particular constituencies. And those are all information all available on the website uh, about those. Um, but we do encourage uh, our candidates to indicate they're interested in a scholarship because um, obviously they're, they're a good opportunity. And we also participate in the student loan program Prodigy, um, and so students can also inquire about it. And uh, are scholarships awarded along with the offer, or do applicants need to apply for, for each of them? Um, it depends. They're, they each have a different set of criteria, um, but the scholar, people are informed of whether or not they have a scholarship very soon after they're admitted to the program. Got it. Got it. And can we just take a minute to talk about your one plus one option? I, I'm very curious about this myself. Oxford is so well known throughout the world, and you've, um, you're so reputable for you know, different areas of study. How does that work? Would you get the MBA degree first and then get your specialized master's degree, or nope. does other it way is it up to the student? Yeah, other way around. Okay, other yeah, way around. Absolutely. So, um, so the way it works is that you would come in and you would do an MSc, a specialized master, in one of the several disciplines that we offer the program in. Um, and from the outset, you're you know you're a member of our community as well, and there's a, a bridging program to introduce you to our community here at the business school, um, and then the the following year, you start on the MBA. And it, what it allows, the sequencing is actually deliberate because it allows you to gain a deep knowledge in a particular area um, and then to you know, come, out, come out from that, in essence, sort of, and get the overview and be able to apply that 
see how that deep knowledge could be applied in a business context and have the business knowledge to be able to do it. So we have people from all different types of disciplines. Um, we have someone um, who's coming in who's done an MSc in geography and who has developed a tool for uh, distributing aid, um, food aid in different parts of the world, geographical, GPS-based tool. And so he's coming on to do the the MBA in order to understand how he could distribute this and, and you know and market it in essence and, and develop in, into a business opportunity with people who study education um, who then you know want to go into private sector or public sector thinking about education and think that the business degree and knowledge of the landscape would be useful and knowledge of finance and marketing would be useful as well. A whole range of different paths that people take. People looking now um, we've recently added music to the list of the um, degrees that we will partner with. So we could do a degree in music and then obviously do a business degree and, and have something really unique to offer in, in that particular industry. That's what it's about. And, we, you know, it's a new opportunity. So we're looking at how students use that opportunity um, creatively. And we'll have more examples as the years go on of how, how, that, how that benefits people. Very interesting. And I have one last admissions question. Um, and this is on your, your essays. So um, two, two questions stood out to me in particular. The first is, what should Oxford expect from you? And the other one is, the business of business is business. <laughs> is, is this true? Uh, that one had me thinking for a few minutes. I was like, is, yeah. it, is it true? Is it? I'm not sure. Or maybe it is. Anyways, is it okay for applicants to talk about more personal things or should it be a very professional type of answer in terms of what should Oxford expect from you? I, I think it should, it has to be personal, right, to some extent, right? I, I, we have to know who you are as an individual. And it's difficult to distinguish the, the personal from the professional because whenever any of us walk into a professional environment, we're bringing who we are to that environment. And we're asking you to come into a learning environment to, to you know, open your mind to dedicate a lot of yourself to this environment. We, we'd like to know who you are uh, and whatever you want to tell us about yourself um, that's relevant, we'd like to know. That's great. Thank you for that. And um, our last section of the podcast is to talk about careers. You know, are there any unique recruiting opportunities and relationships that Oxford has with the corporate community? Well, we have quite a lot of relationships, as you can imagine. Um, you know, we... Uh, people come through the school, right, from all different industries and sectors. So one of the things about being here is that there's an opportunity to meet a lot of different people. Um, we have Silicon Valley Comes to Oxford, which brings to the school a number of entrepreneurs and leading venture capitalists that students can meet and interact with. Our career services has relationships with all of the, the big players in the consulting industry, in the finance industry, Amazon.com, other leading technology companies are coming to the school. So what you would expect in any business school is happening. But we're also, we're out there more and more forging relationships with businesses in emerging markets that are doing unique things uh, and with new enterprises and entrepreneurs as well. Um, so quite a lot of opportunity here. And if, if the opportunity isn't here and you want the opportunity, we'll try to help you make it happen, right? Between all of us here, we have a fantastic uh, network and, and, and ability to you know, use the Oxford name to encourage people to come to the school and talk to our students about opportunities that are arising. You know, and I think the, the global employment landscape is evolving like everything else. So we are really keeping an open mind to not just the traditional employers, those are important and they're great and they're doing unique things um, as well. But also, you know, who else is emerging? You know, what kind of employers are there in the new African business environment? And what kind of opportunities are coming out there? We have our sights on all of that um, so that our students know, um, you know, what kind of things are, are available to them. Yeah, and I noticed because you published such extensive uh, career statistics that over the past four years, your percentage of graduates working in finance and consulting has, has dropped. Um, and that your percentage of, of students going into diversified industry jobs has mm -hmm. grown, and, and nonprofit jobs, I should add. Yeah. Um, and uh, is that an intentional trend? Um, it's not as 
necessarily. I mean, students, uh, we, we choose the best students. We don't choose students for what they're going to do. So we don't um, necessarily, you know, say, well, I would like to have a class with uh, a certain percentage of consultants, right? We choose the best students coming through the door. And I think it's pretty natural that year on year and over time the, the trends will change as to where people go. And, and this year we had a tremendous success with Amazon.com, for example. Um, and that has to do with their hiring cycle, with the right match between our students and their, their needs at that particular time. Um, you know, companies grow at different paces and things like that. But we're, we're pretty strong across the board. I mean, we're very strong in the consulting. Our students have done quite well in that area, even if the numbers have dropped. They've gotten some very good positions in that area, and we would support people quite well there. I mean, Oxford obviously has an outstanding reputation, but, you know, of course I have to go online and see what other people are saying about Oxford. And one thing is that it's a relatively young business school. What, what would you say to that? That's probably my question. What would I say? That we're a younger school, we're building our reputation, we're building our alumni network. Um, you know, but I, I feel that we are now actually at a moment where we're really coming into ourselves. And we have a fantastic dean at the business school who's just innovating and driving a lot of change and, and building us up as a business school. It's just a great moment to be here. And you, know, I think the students who have been here, our alumni, would, would speak very highly of their experience and the opportunities it brought to them. And that's what really matters to me right now. Yeah. My last question on careers is about international students, because I've heard that it's been it's been getting a little bit harder to get visas after graduating from from master's programs. Well, is that true? And then, how does Oxford Said help prepare international students to to get great jobs? Well, we yeah, it's it's true that the 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 visa situation is evolving and tightening uh, in the UK as we know um, in general, um, and and we have to work with that. And we have to be realistic about those opportunities. It's not the case that all of our students come and and want to work in London. Um, and we provide opportunities for students to uh, find careers all over the world. So, um, and we encourage students if we think you know there's going to be a, a difficulty with the visa to, to, to look globally as well as here, you know, depending on what their interests are. Um, so, you know, it, it really depends on the situation. It's, uh, if you're hired by a company here, the visa issue um, is usually taken care of by the company, so that's not an issue then. And that's the that tier two visa, right? Yeah, that's right. I, we've learned so much about the program, and I'd just like to ask you, what is the best way for our listeners to contact you know students and alumni to get a, a firsthand perspective of of what the program's like? If you go on the website, you'll find my email address and our general contact of our team, who can write directly to me, and I will be happy to talk to you about the program and put you in touch with alumni who are in similar field or similar area to you. Um, as I said, we really take our community seriously here. I, I like to talk to the candidates and get to know them and um, you know, work with them throughout their career. So I welcome the approach. Okay, perfect. And I'll be sure to link uh, to that page in the show notes of this podcast. And last question, is there anything else uh, about the Oxford MBA that you just wish more candidates knew about? Well, I did want to underscore the, the new aspect of the talent development component of the program so that we, um, you know, that it's pretty unique to have coaches for each student and to have in place the opportunity to develop your softer skills as you go along and we, you know, really care for you in that sense and work with you. But, you know, generally, I think the thing that people find is best about this experience is really being in the business school and the university and the people that you meet and the opportunities that you have to talk about things that you haven't talked about before um, and to hear opinions you haven't heard before. And it's just an, an awesome learning experience. And that's what I think is the best part about it. Dr. Dana, thank you so much for being on the show. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks for listening to the Touch MBA podcast. Don't be shy. We have a mailing list. Go to touchmba.com 
and get yourself signed up. And we'll keep you posted with the best tips and insider interviews on how to get into your number one school. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook at TouchMVA. See you soon.